um, this video is going to be how to block a cardigan knit in one piece. This is a raglan sleeve cardigan knit in one piece, but we have not put on the button bands or our shawl collar yet. We're going to block it first. And this video is about how to do that blocking. So what we're going to need is your sweater. We also need the page that you filled out for your body measurements and your schematic. On the body measurements, we're going to use the arm length, which is measured from the back neck to the wrist. So we need that measurement. And on this schematic, we need the width of the chest and the length of the sweater. And those are the three numbers that we're going to need. So on mine, I know what those numbers are. This is my sweater. I'm going to take it up temporarily. We're going to start with the chest. I want my chest to be 40 inches wide, so that would be 20 inches here. So we're going to mark here and here. I'm using these colored pins so that you can see them easily. I want my sweater to be 26 inches long. So we're going to mark here and here for the length. And then the sleeve length is going to be 28 inches. And on the other side, we'll also do 28 inches. And I'm measuring from the back neck right there. Okay, so that's the general size and shape that I want my sweater to be. That's what I knitted it to be. So now we're going to lay my sweater out here. Because these sweaters have cables in them, the cables will pull in considerably and may affect the fabric before blocking. So we'll move this down, that's in the way. So our body needs to be moved down, here, there. Here's our sweater. We're going to have a three inch button band in the front so we can leave that open. Make this sleep sort of longer. So right now this sweater is not going to fit exactly, but we're just kind of setting the parameters. The most important thing though that we're doing right now is how we're going to fold the sweater up in preparation for blocking. Because once the sweater is wet, I want to be able to unfold it and have it be in this shape without manipulating it very much. So I'm going to bring this arm in, and this arm in, and then I'm going to fold it in half, and up this way. Now I use my sink for blocking, and this will fit in the sink perfectly. Okay, so I'm filling the sink with just room temperature water. And there's no soap or anything in here, just plain water, room temperature. And I'm going to put my sweater in here. It's all folded up. I'm just going to set it on the water, and I'm pressing it down, and you'll see the air bubbles come up. You may even hear them. I'm not agitating it. I'm just holding it under the water, allowing the air bubbles to come up. Once we get it all under here, then we'll leave it in here for 20 minutes. It takes that long for the wool to absorb the water and become completely saturated. And that's what allows the blocking to happen, is to have the wool completely saturated. Okay, so we're going to leave it under the water for 20 minutes. Okay, so now this has been setting in here for 20 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the water out of the sink. And at the same time, I'm just going to squeeze the water out. I'm not wringing it. I'm just letting the water come out of the sweater. I'm squeezing it up against the side of the sink. And then I'm going to lift it over here to the towel. It's still folded. And I'm going to unfold it a little bit. And I'm going to roll it up in the towel and get as much of the excess water out as I can. And this is in fingering weight. I'll probably be able to get most of the water out in one towel. If you're using a heavier weight yarn, it may take two towels, so you would do this twice. And you can feel the towel, it's getting wet. It's absorbing the water. So I'm pressing on it.
Okay. We'll open it back up. Looks good. Okay, so we're gonna uh, switch over to our blocking board again now. Okay, so here we are back on the blocking board and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to fold it back a little bit so it's easy to lift up without stretching it. The biggest thing that you do not want to do is lift a wet sweater. It will stretch it all out of shape and then it's really hard to get it back in shape once you do that. Whoops, we lost our pin. Let's remeasure across here. We want it 40 inches, it's 20. Okay, so now we're going to unfold it again very carefully. To the dimensions. Now it's very pliable when it's wet. See how the cable's going like this? So this is your opportunity to get the fabric exactly the way you want it. We want our cable going straight. So I'm starting with the inside of the back of the sweater. We don't want wrinkles here. We want our ribbing nice and pretty and straight. And you can also check to make sure the rows, see, I have this little design in here so you can actually see whether the rows are going straight or whether they're cattywampus. You want them straight. And you'll probably fiddle with this a lot. And this is the time to fiddle with it because once you get it the way you want and it dries that way, that's how it's going to stay until the next time you get it wet. So I like my back cable. That looks good. So I'm going to start bringing the front over, and the, this is three inches wide. My button band is going to be three inches wide, and my cable's three inches wide, so that's going to be my guide. So this should come right up to the cable. And see how this is longer here? So that means we need to do some adjusting here. We need this to fit. The front and back are the same length. That's better. And again, you want this all nice and straight. The side of my sweater is coming out to here. There is some waist shaping in here, so this part's going to come in like this. Here's my waist shaping right here. Now let's open it up and make sure. This all looks good. There's no wrinkles under there. Bring it back over. The more attention you pay to the blocking, the happier you'll be with the results of your sweater. Now I'm going to come around and do the other side. can't wait to see this when it's dry. I'm so excited. So I'm going to start down here. Line this up on this side. Now the cable on the top of the sleeve is the top of the sleeve, so it will stick up like that. It should. It should come across and stick up. We have this off center. I'm going to move this this way and bring that one in when I get back over there. Then, as I'm uh, letting it dry here, I have a ceiling fan in this room, and the ceiling fan is going to be running. That helps it to dry. And also, I will come in here every once in a while, and I'll probably see something that needs to be adjusted, and I'll adjust it. I just keep fine-tuning it until it's the way that I want it to be. Here's the cable. See, it's sneaking down inside there, so I'm going to pull it out.
Now you can see my sleeve grew in length quite a bit. Do you see that? And this is a good thing for you to see because this will happen to you and it can even happen on the body of the sweater. It can stretch considerably while it's wet. So what I do is I get it to the length that I want it to be and then you're going to have to manipulate the fabric a little bit and that involves patting it and letting the stitches go back in because they got stretched while they were wet. And they will go back in. Do you see what's happening here? I don't want that twisted. I want it straight. It's a lot of fiddling. But, and that's the reason why I fold it up when I'm getting it wet and why I carefully keep it folded while I'm uh, blotting it with the towel and keep it folded until I lay it out here because the whole sweater can get really, really big and out of shape if you don't do that. This is coming back in nicely. So I'll fiddle with that a little bit more. I'm going to come over and work on this sleeve. Move that in there a little bit. And knowing that the other sleeve stretched out so easily, we're going to be really careful with this one. And try not to stretch it out to begin with. Much better. Now, it's, you will have a little place that folds up at the underarm there. That's just where this, this sleeve is bending around and you can just pull it up like this with your finger. It'll dry that way, it'll be fine. That looks much better. I got a little fold back here on the back side. See, there's a fold there. If you feel that, you need to straighten it out because it will dry with the fold. Feels good. Okay, that sleeve's looking good. Let's look at this one a little bit more. And like I said, you'll come back and you'll be fine tuning this until it's dry. Uh, here where I live, this will probably take a day or two to dry. I have a ceiling fan in this room, it'll be running on it. So that looks good. I'm happy with that. Like I said, I'll come around and fine tune it. Every time I walk through this room, I'll be over here touching this and getting it straight here and straight there. But this is a good start. So that's how you set a, a sweater out. Now when it's dry, we'll come back and we'll take a look at it and We'll pull it up off the table and see what it looks like. Okay, so this sweater has been drying since 3 p.m. yesterday, and it is now 10 p.m. Uh, with a ceiling fan directly over it. And this is in the wintertime in Bakersfield. Our humidity here is probably 15 or 20 percent. Um, so it gives you an idea of how long it takes to dry with a fan over it. And this is just fingering weight yarn, so it dries a lot faster than worsted weight yarn. Worsted weight yarn would probably take two days. So I'm just going to check it. It feels dry. It feels dry underneath too. So we can, we're can we going to double check, make sure our measurements didn't change. I wanted it to be 20 inches across the bust. And it pulled in about a quarter of an inch. So I'm getting uh, 19 and 3 fourths inches there. We want to 26 inches here. It's about 25 and 3 fourths, so it pulled up a little bit during the drying process. But this looks really good. So, we're, you know, we can see the fabric looks lovely. This is just, it's completely different from when it was uh, prior to blocking.
So that's the blocking process. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like watching my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up um, and share them with your friends. Come back and watch some more. Join me in my groups on Ravelry and Facebook. They're called Knitting with Susie and Brian, and we have a lot of like-minded people on there. We're working this cardigan as a tutorial, and this video is actually part of that tutorial. The next up, we'll be adding the button bed and shawl collar. Take care and happy knitting.